Good morning. morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share my Christian walk with my friends and my church family. Please bless my words. May they be a comfort to those who hear them. And I ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. And I'm going to take a drink of water before I get going. So as you've read, I'm Kathleen Sarah, and I was born at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. My father was a lieutenant in the army. We moved to uh, Munich. Then we came back to Michigan where he finished his degree at the University of Michigan. I started school in Three Rivers, Michigan. Then we moved to Seattle, Washington. I attended a couple of schools there. We moved to Richland, Washington. I attended a couple of schools there. We moved to Los Alamos, New Mexico. I attended three different, well, three elementary schools there, a middle school, and a high school there. Um, I've been to a lot of schools. I'm also a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, and I know about Harbor Springs because my grandparents, who were born and raised Michiganders, built a summer home in Goodhart in 1939, and I came here in the summers my entire life. And of course, I love it here. My first exposure to church was with my grandmother when I was three and a half years old downstate, and she asked me, did I know the song, Jesus Loves Me? And I said, no. And not only did I not know the song, but who was Jesus? And my grandmother sang it for me, and she had a beautiful high soprano voice. She was a music teacher, a piano teacher, and a soloist. In fact, she was a soloist with the Cincinnati uh, Choral Society. She told me about God and Jesus being the Son of God. And the church we went to was a Christian science church. I really liked that Jesus loved all the little children. I attended Christian science churches through my growing up years, my first years of college, and my first years in the Air Force. My own parents never talked about religion or our faith, but we did attend church as a family. I learned in Christian science that God is love, Jesus was his son, the Christ, and the Holy Ghost was like a divine comforter. Growing up, I believed that Christian science, my Christian science church, was just like all the other non-Catholic churches. And I had no idea that Christian science was considered um, not really a Christian church because nobody ever told me it wasn't. When I was in college, I went to the University of Wyoming. I ended up on the 12th floor of an all girls dorm, no boys allowed. And most of the girls on my dorm floor turned out to be born again Christians. And when they found out that I was a Christian scientist, they thought I was headed for hell. My salvation became their project. (laughs) They took me to Campus Crusades for Christ, which was a lot of fun, I will say, and I loved the songs that we sang. And they even had some of those leaders come to my dorm room to talk to me Unfortunately, the leaders had some misconceptions about Christian science, but I was willing to listen to them. I found it kind of humorous, 
and didn't feel threatened at all. And I knew that they just wanted me to know Christ and the Holy Spirit as they did. After college, I entered the Air Force as a second lieutenant. And that was the first year that the first 10 women were going through pilot training in the Air Force. I was stationed at a base that was also a pilot training base. Those women were going through in Arizona, and I was stationed in Texas. And at a pilot training base, there are lots and lots of male pilots. There were no women officers um, other than the nurses and three other women officers who were married to pilots, and I felt very, very alone. I continued attending the local Christian Science Church, but I met no one. I lived a very isolated life. Um, I had no women friends for over two years. Unfortunately, there was no such thing as Facebook and text messaging and all these wonderful things that our young people have access to. But even at the Christian Science Church, no one ever invited me for lunch, even though I was the only single person in attendance. I kind of got tired of working government contracts. I had majored in business and I was a government contracting officer. And so I thought, and from my desk, I could see the airplanes flying around outside. And I thought it looked like fun. And I thought, well, it can't be that hard. All these guys are doing it. <laughs> and so I applied for pilot training and I got accepted. And I am proud to say I was one of the first 50 women pilots to be accepted to pilot training of the current era. Of course, there were women pilots in World War II. Pilot training was a lot of fun, and it was lots and lots of studying of subjects I knew nothing about. I didn't know anything about hydraulic systems, electric systems, pneumatic systems, all those other aircraft systems. Um, but it really, really bugged me that some of the instructor pilots kept their Bibles on their desks in the flight room. It seemed very inappropriate to me and rather intimidating as a female because I was the only woman in my class and I knew that a lot of those guys were not very happy that I was there. We also had a Jewish, um, I had a Jewish classmate in my class. So I kind of started not liking some of these Christians. At my first flying assignment, after pilot training, I met my dearest friend, Robin. Her husband, Tom, was in my squadron. They are both devout Christians and began quietly praying for me. They lived their faith, shared slowly, but most of all, they embraced me. Robin prayed for me for eight years. I needed lots of prayer. I always felt God calling me. He wanted more from me. And I knew that Christian science just wasn't it. There, there was no fellowship. And as I tried to read The Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy, it just wasn't making any sense to me. So I did try some other Christian churches, Protestant churches. At one church, though, that I tried, kind of in the October time frame, um, they had a message one Sunday on the Christian way to vote. And then the following Sunday, we heard the opposing Christian way to vote. So I had never heard anything like that in a Christian science church, and I definitely wasn't impressed. So that didn't help my opinion or attitude about mainstream Christianity. I now had a very 
negative attitude about Christian churches. When I dated anyone, I would bring up religion. I knew if they were devout Christians, this would be their opening to tell me all about their church. And I could then say, thank you very much for dinner. It was nice meeting you, but please don't call again. <laughs> In the eighth year of, excuse me, In the eighth year of Robin praying for me, I met Gus. I learned on the third day of chatting with him that he was a Christian. Had I learned that on the first day, I never would have spoken to him again. So I asked him lots of questions about what the Bible says about a woman's role, a Christian woman's role. He told me to read Proverbs 31, <clears throat> verses 10 to 31, the wife of noble character. Now this was a woman I could relate to. She buys a field and plants a vineyard. She conducts profitable trading. She serves the poor. Her family is well clothed. She speaks with wisdom. And in verse 30, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. She was a far cry from who I was led to believe a Christian wife needed to be. Submissive, quiet, not ambitious, certainly not an Air Force officer. So I finally said to myself, Stop being wishy-washy about all this Christianity. You've got to decide once and for all, do I believe in the Bible or don't I believe in the Bible? And if I believe in the Bible, well, I jolly well better read it. Well, I didn't quite read the Bible. It's an awfully large book. But I found a Bible that I had been given years prior, and it was titled The Open Bible. And in it, there was the most thorough Christian Bible study that I had read up to that time. Unbelievably thorough. And it explained a lot of things that I, to date, knew nothing about. I had never heard of the Trinity or had understood it. Baptism was also new to me. I had never been baptized. Um, it talked about Jesus' miracles and teachings, and there were all kinds of cross-references. I'd read one section, and then it would take me to another part of the Bible, and then another part of the Bible. And that took me um, well over a month to get through. And finally, after I finished that, I felt convicted. And I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins, and I accepted him as my Lord and Savior. I was born again. I truly experienced the Holy Spirit dwelling within me. I was on the highest of highs for two weeks. I couldn't put the Bible down. I bought myself an NIV study Bible I was reading it every day before work. I was reading it when I got home from work. I was reading it every weekend. It, it just was an amazing experience. I called my friend Robin and I said, Robin, the Bible is the dash one for life. Now for those of you who don't know what the dash one is, the dash one is all the manuals that pilots in the military carry around <laughs> that tell us everything we need to know about the aircraft. It tells about the electrical system and the hydraulic system and the pneumatic system and the flight controls and on and on and on. And it's this, anyway, it's huge. It's kind of like your automobile manual, but far more detailed. And she chuckled and said, well, yeah, that's kind of a way to think about it. 
I started attending a Missouri Synod Lutheran Church and their women's Bible study. At this time, I was a major in the Air Force. I finally was making wonderful women friends again. Gus and I got married. He left the Air Force to fly for United Airlines, and I stayed in to retirement. Our daughter Olivia was born, and we were on cloud nine. We had no idea what awaited us. Two and a half years after Olivia's birth, our daughter Victoria was born at a civilian hospital in Torrance, California. Within hours of her birth, I spiked a fever of 104 degrees. Then it went back down to normal. The next morning, 104 degrees again, then normal. Then later that day, 104 degrees again. The obstetrician requested a chest x-ray, thinking maybe I had pneumonia because I'd had a C-section. Well, there was no pneumonia, but I had a tumor in the lower lobe of my left lung. Now I became the patient, and my newborn was cared for by the nurses when I wasn't having tests done. Two days later, my doctor met with us to tell me he had spoken to the Air Force clinic commander who had read my medical records, and they showed that that tumor had been identified by a chest x-ray two years prior, and it had just been filed into my Air Force medical records. Now the tumor had doubled in size. I am quite certain that God gave me the fever so that that tumor would be found. Plus, then I prayed. It was very scary to think I had a beautiful family and I might lose it. Five weeks later, they gave me time to recover from the C-section. And then at the San Diego Naval Hospital, I was scheduled for lung surgery. When I asked my Navy, Navy surgeon, When I asked my Navy surgeon in San Diego how bad the recovery would be, he said, when I'm through with you, you'll think your obstetrician was Santa Claus. <laughs> and he was right. It's a horrible surgery. So I had to recover from that. And then we had to spend time praying for the results, what the results would be from, from the pathology. And I kept repeating over and over Proverbs 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall make your path straight. The pathology came back, and it was cancer. Now I had to apply to remain in the Air Force, and on flying status, and both of those were approved. When I finally returned to work, I had been away for a total of 12 weeks, maternity leave plus recovering from lung surgery. All I heard when I got back was how many weekends my financial team had worked and how they really could have used my help. No one asked about my baby, my health, or my long-term prognosis. Nothing. Crickets. The Air Force had been offering early retirements for a couple of years, but pilots had been excluded, even if we were in non-flying assignments. Six months after my return, Another early retirement was offered and pilots were eligible. Now I was a lieutenant colonel and I could not wait to get out. 
So despite, at that point in time, me still being the primary breadwinner because Gus had only been with United Airlines a couple of years and they paid peanuts initially, uh, we figured out how to make it financially and I jumped at the chance. I became a full-time mom and I loved it. My daughters were three and one when I retired. We settled into life in the Colorado mountains and attended a church that we loved. God had truly blessed us. However, then 9-11, the day that we are honoring today, came along and it caused a lot of disruption in the airline community. And once again, we had to make a major change in our lives. I needed to go back to work. So I found a job with a defense consulting firm in San Antonio, Texas, where we settled into our new routine. Then God helped me out once again. I developed a constant irritating little cough that my client didn't like very much. He was an Air Force colonel and commander of the organization that I supported. He was from New England. And if you've lived in New England or worked with people from New England, they can be a little rough or gruff. And he was like that. And he said to me, that cough isn't good. You need to get that checked out. Okay, the client isn't happy. I better get my cough checked out. So later that day, I made an appointment at Brook Army Medical Center and a physician assistant who had never met me before paid attention to my medical records and she saw that my last x-ray, chest x-ray, had been three years prior. So she had me get another one. She called me at home that night to tell me my friend was back. It had been 15 years since my first uh, lung surgery. And now I had another tumor. So again, I began praying and repeating Proverbs 5 and 6. The tumor was so large that my entire left lung had to be removed. The first thing I asked the surgeon upon waking was, can I still ski? And he said, where? And I said, well, Colorado. And he said, can't you find some place lower? <laughs> and that's why we moved here full time <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> because I am an avid skier and have been my whole life. And it's my favorite sport. We didn't know that this would be God's plan for us. But I'm so thankful to live in such a beautiful place that offers the winter and summer sports that our family enjoys. I thank grandma and grandpa all the time. And a huge bonus has been the welcoming fellowship we've experienced here at First Prez. This is our church home and we are so thankful God led us here. Thank you. <laughs>